Welcome back to another episode of Against the Storm. In this one, we are going to be starting out at the beginning of a cycle, so we have plenty of time before the next wave. In our immediate vicinity, we don't have much going on. We pretty much just have this Fertile Grounds modifier. Glades have an increased chance of, in of including Fertile Soil, which is a very nice positive modifier, makes it quite a bit easier for us. Which means we should be able to increase our difficulty level. So let's say putting it on veteran. That should suffice. So, considering there's going to be a lot more fertile soil on this map, it means that we're going to have a prioritization level for humans. However, three is the best we got for this particular caravan. So I'm wondering if it might not be better to just try a normal one outside of this area of influence? It honestly might be. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna... I, I think I'm gonna try elsewhere one for this one. And maybe next time we'll tackle that Fertile Grounds modifier. I, I want to try to get a few more villagers starting off. A few more humans. I keep saying villagers. Alrighty, so going with the embarkation, uh, we don't have enough to grab stone or clay, so I guess let's just start off with some wood, or maybe a little extra food. Wood is easy, so let's go with food. Alrighty, so we've got gathering knowledge. Gathering speed is increased by 10% for every two workers assigned to gathering camps. Not bad. And martial lands are home to enormous life forms. Giant resource nodes can be found in Forbidden Glades. Each glade will have a different one. Okay. So our negative, our positive effect uh, is Strange Visions. Villagers with this effect have a plus 20% chance of doubling their yield with each, produ with each production cycle. To gain it... Uh, oh, wow. They only need housing? Wow, that is powerful. So, Drizzle, you just have a 20% increase. You just have a 20% chance of doubling the yield. That's super powerful. All you need is housing. That is so, so broken. Wow. Okay. So, we got normal looming darkness, creeping shadows, discovering glade during a storm. Okay, so we just don't want to discover during glade, during, uh, during the storms. Under an open sky, or we... <laughs> another reason to get housing. No problem there. And then we don't need to worry until a level 4 hostility ranking. And for that one, just need housing and services. And this one, yeah, just need services. So we are looking pretty. Alrighty, so let me go through our options here, and I will be back once I've decided. I'm going to go with Lumber Mill, since this map does not have much in the way of lumber. A Forager's Camp, because this map has an increased chance to find larger nodes of resources. And a Rain Mill, that way we have a nice steady supply of flour to eventually turn into baked goods. Okay, so starting off, we are taking a look around. We have plenty of dangerous glades nearby, as per usual. We have a bunch of of uh, just regular trees over here, so this would be a good area to chop down and then build into. That way we aren't risking anything. However, we also have enough land over here that we can expand into to make our housing district without any worry. So I am thinking that we put our housing over here, we start off some farming stuff over here, well, uh, gathering stuff really and then we put our production over here that seems to be a good plan in my book so let's go ahead and start us off we don't have any resources to make ourselves roads so we're just gonna have to deal with paths unfortunately but that is no big deal starting off with our normal pathways then making ourselves our wooden camps as per the usual and I still don't know what is better, putting the, uh, putting the camps directly against the resource that we are mining or putting it on a road. 
So I am going blind. If any of you happen to know, I would love for you to comment. Go ahead and speeding up our time here since we have nothing else to do. And actually we can prioritize our woodcutters camps. Silly me. Uh, but at this point there's no point because we already had them finished. So that is three in that guy and three in that guy. And we are going to be telling our woodcutters camps to avoid glades except when marked. Got our first cornerstone. Ooh, these two are both pretty good. We have meat specialization or we have exploration contacts, contracts. I believe I'm going to go with meat specialization. I don't have too many source of, of meat, sources of meat on this map, but the ability to just stack perks is just too strong to not pick it. Especially this early on. It's my first year, my first cornerstone. I can only grow from this point. Alrighty, so we are starting to get our wood and our first three orders have come in. So we have the options of a trading post or lizard resolve. And the lizard resolve at least would be super easy to complete or immediately. Trading post, we can easily accomplish that and that gets us more, more parts, more simple tools, and baked goods. Yeah, I'm definitely going with that one. Booming economy have 15 values of goods produced or reinforced saw blades plank production. So honestly, I think I'm just gonna go with big delivery anyway. So I think in this one, it would be better to go with, yeah, we get sim number of simple tools. So we're just gonna go with Amber Trade. Alrighty, we have our orders, we have our cornerstones. So now we begin to play. Gonna go ahead and set up some of our housing division. And that should be enough to avoid any negative effects for this year. Light root and corruption? Yes, yes, I will be explaining that on my own terms. Thank you, game. Gathering camp. So we can go ahead and set up our trappers. Since we have more lizard men than anyone else. Which means it's more it's most productive to set up the trapper hut and get additional eggs for the time being. And since we have a population of more than eight, we can go ahead and set up our park. Just anywhere is fine. Let's go ahead and just put it in this corner for the time being. And that will allow us to quickly get ourselves a plus two to our global resolve. And there we are. So everyone is a little bit happier, which is all the better for us. Gonna go ahead and sign both of our free villagers to the trapper's camp since we have nothing that we need to be building right now. Okay, I stand corrected. I do want to get our trading post up, so I'm just going to take off one of our villagers from our uh, woodcutting and set us up a trading post. So, this can be placed anywhere, so I'll just place it over here, out of the way. And we're into our first storm. So, nothing to devastating yet just the looming darkness our negative four global resolve but luckily because we are able to get up this park and raise our encampment level that's just a negative two and we have our trading post up and running and there we are we have our full sets of houses ready to be moved into so we have plenty of living space, so we do not need to worry about our homeless population. Alrighty, and we are beginning year two. So we have newcomers and cornerstone. It is a good idea to always pick the cornerstone before your settlers. So honestly, I think my best option here is the Rudy Ground. 
Yeah, I have a trading post, so I can go for like a tradesman's uh, campaign. Let's try that. Why not? I, I mean, it really doesn't matter, so I'll just go with the beavers. Why not? Alrighty, so we begin year two. So, let's see what we can do. Let us set up... We have how many free people? Only three. Is there a forging that we can do? No, we need the herbalist, don't we? Yes, we do. So let's go ahead and set that up. Or should we prioritize getting more of the basic resources? Because we have steady food for the time being still. Oh, and these, uh, those little green icons. That's our focus bonus. That's insane. That is completely absurd. These guys are producing with a 20% chance to double their output. That is absurd. Ooh, what's this up? Uh, orders. Okay, so we have more orders and we have our first trader. Yeah, we don't have anything that we can sell you. So thanks for coming by, but you're useless to us. Going over to our orders, let's go ahead and look through them and see what we want to do. Wow, this is a new reward. Advanced farming? I I have not seen this before, but this is insane. This would go great with our next campaign into that uh, fertile grounds. Well, since we are not going to be farming much at all on this little fertile soil map, I'm just going to go with the blight posts. Am I getting resin on this map? I'm not. I have no reason to pick that. Okay, uh, let's just go with the outpost then. Alrighty, so we have our orders dealt with. Let us get back to what we were doing. With our herbalist up, we can go ahead and drop some villagers in there, gather up some more food for us. That should help us out. And I would like to start collecting this stone. Maybe I should take off one of these guys and pu put them over here. Let's go ahead and make that stone cutter's camp. Alrighty, with it built, I'll go ahead and drop this guy and then move the other one over. Since we aren't lacking on food for the time being. Alrighty, not too much longer before the next storm. And it's pretty much business as usual for me. Nope, oh, trapper's camp. Okay. I uh, can reclaim those workers for the time being then. And I can put one of them to work at the herbalist camp. The other one, what will I have it do? Uh, build those two things for the time being, I guess. Uh, I really don't have much for you to do, do I? Okay, so I don't have anything for that guy to do, so I'm just gonna continue building up into this area and have him build the pass to this way, and then just keep him open, I guess. Oh, I know. I need to move this training post anyway. And here we are, into the second year's storm. Still nothing to write home about. Still within the zero rank of the, well, level zero hostility level, so I am all good. I am going to go ahead and make ourselves the crude workstation on this side, and the makeshift post on this side. This is pretty much the standard of where I'd like to put them, because they're out of the way, but still within a good distance of the warehouse. So, that's just where I'd like to put them. Alrighty, new year, new cornerstone. I am going to be getting neither of those, so they don't matter. I guess I'm not doing anything with this year, so I'll do that one. I'll just go with the additional beaver and then set them to work right over there. So I do have access to rain collectors, so since I have extra villagers now, I'll go ahead and make one of these guys. Put it right there. 
uh, but it does require these planks. So what I'll need to do first before then is deprioritize it. What's this collector? Green trees of water, rain water used to power rain engines and food oriented buildings. I'm not terribly familiar with what the uh, store with what the water production stuff does just yet. So I will have to read about that in just a little bit, but for the time being, I need to implement some plank production. So I'll go ahead and just throw you two in here since you're free. And big delivery. Actually, I... Can I do big delivery first? You require 10 planks, 6 fabric, or 6 bricks. Don't have any of that. Okay, you're gonna have to wait then. Gotcha. I need how many for the rain mill? Uh, not layman. English language, I can't. Rain mill, lumber mill. I need two and two, so I need one of you and one of you. So enable you and enable you. And there we are. Stonecutter's camp is now unavailable for further use. So I will go ahead and get rid of these. And I need to start with... I need to start uh, mining into a glade because I am out of uh, resources. So my best area to move into is going to be over here, huh? Because there's three glades right over here. So I'm going to reprioritize my choppers and have them come over here. There we are. Start up the paths and just let things keep on going. Herbalist camp is now empty as well. Okay, so we really need to get more stuff going on, don't we? I was uh, really waiting on that, huh? Alrighty, well, with the production of the fabric and bricks... Oh, and that was during the drizzle season, so they were able to double produce. Nice. So now I can produce the lumber mill. And I can set that right here for nice quick access. All right, so since I have available people, I can set in some beavers. I'll switch you out over here and put a beaver over here for the extra resolve bonus and then put in the lizard. Because why not? We have more orders. That one's more doable, so I'll just go with that. I'll just go with the Nets perk, because why not? More more meat is more meat is more meat is more meat. Alrighty, so we have a new glade with meat production. Sweet. And of course, fertile soil. Can't do anything with that fertile soil, but it is there. Along with that, we have a trader. So what you got for us? So, since I have uh, excess wildfire essence, I'm just going to trade three of it away for the uh, six amber, and I'll call that good. I have never needed more than one extra hearth in any of the games I've played, and I got a decently far with my old game. So, I'm not going to worry about that at all. Oh hey, and look, it completed a uh, order. So what did that get me? That got me just more stuff. I am going to go with the cookhouse because that will allow us to start producing quality food since we already have the ability to make flour and we have uh, meat production in the future with these uh, with this glade that we just opened up. So cookhouse seems to be the way to go. Alright, with our lumber mill ready, we can take off uh, the lumber guy from here, put him over there. Take off another one over here, replace them, and move you over. There we go, our reshuffling of personnel is complete, and these guys I'm gonna have make 50 uh, wood planks before they stop. Don't need scrolls or packs of trade goods, so I will go ahead and disable those. And we are good to keep going. 